For us, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Let's bring in Robert Daly. He is the director of the Wilson Center's Kissinger Institute on China and the United States. Uh, Robert, you served as a U.S. diplomat in Beijing. Uh, I'm wondering, from your perspective, since Tiananmen Square, have you seen protests like this in China? Some citizens going as far as calling for political reform? There are many protests in China every year. Sometimes there are tens of thousands, but they're all small and local. They have to do with things like uh, land use rights or prices or local government abuse. This is the first time since Tiananmen that there have been national protests. They're not really nationwide. They're in about 16 different provinces about one issue. They're not yet on anything like the scale of the Tiananmen protests in 1989, however. How long do you think this uh, uprising will last, continue, considering the Chinese government's relentless uh, censorship policies, not to mention the crackdowns? Well, the discontent and the anger that's reflected are continual and probably growing. But the protests are not ongoing. Uh, to the best of our knowledge, there were no protests in any of these sites on Monday. The police presence is large. Some of the uh, sites, for example, in Shanghai, where the protests had been some of the loudest, have been walled off. And so as of Monday, there was nothing. And of course, once uh, protests like this lose momentum, it gets that much tougher to start up again because now the government is more prepared. So we don't yet know whether this was a weekend of demonstrations or something that can be sustained. Top U.S. health officials say the, the long-term lockdown is not an effective public health strategy. Of course, Chinese officials insist that their zero COVID strategy is, quote, scientific and effective. In the last hour, we heard uh, Dr. Fauci talk about why this doesn't make sense unless it's being done for a particular purpose. Why, why do you think she is so stubbornly clinging onto this policy? Well, both Chinese and foreign, and including American immunologists, have said that if China had an America-like regime, that would probably result in about 1.5 million Chinese deaths. And she has said that he is not willing to do that, that he is willing to harm the economy to save lives. And that has been part of his claim, not just to domestic legitimacy within China, but it's been part of his claim to provide wise governance that should give him a table in international decision-making bodies as well. So the effects of zero COVID, it's both about the Communist Party's legitimacy at home, but also about its claim for influence worldwide. Well, you heard Fauci also say in the, in the previous hour uh, that the Chinese are too proud to ask for help when it comes to getting a more effective vaccine, that one of the problems in China is that their vaccine is no good compared to the Pfizer vaccine or Moderna, for example. Yes, that's true. And when about two years ago, China was in negotiations with the Europeans to get Pfizer and Moderna in, China insisted as a condition that the Europeans also license China's not very good jabs. There's also an element of nationalist pride in this. Given the friction between the United States and China, what really amounts to a kind of new Cold War, Xi Jinping does not want the Chinese lives to be saved by Western or American medicine. We're also seeing protesters in Hong Kong holding up uh, blank white, piece, uh, white sheets of paper, uh, which symbolizes the oppressive censorship uh, in China, that, that nothing's written on there, and that, that's all that needs to be said. You've said China is moving from authoritarianism to techno-totalitarianism. Uh, tell us what that means, and, and what does a fully censored Chinese society look like? Xi Jinping is now using uh, ubiquitous uh, high vision cameras all over China, which are linked up uh, to artificial intelligence systems. He's using big data such that they can look at a crowd in China, scan a crowd with a camera, who's there, know who they're speaking to on their social media, know where they live, uh, know what they buy. And they are also getting involved in what's called predictive policing, looking at things like uh, posture and other physical signals that somebody might be seen as dangerous to really exercise ever more total control over China. That's what I mean by techno-totalitarianism. It's the surveillance state. It's one of the things that the Chinese are quite fed up with. They're afraid that post-COVID, the government will continue to track their actions as they have during the pandemic, although not this time for the sake of their health, uh, but just to make sure that they are you know, towing the party line. So many American companies and corporations are in bed with the Chinese government because they want that Chinese money, whether it's uh, Disney or, or the NBA uh, or I could go on and on. Is there anything you think that we as consumers uh, could be doing to help the protesters when it comes to 
protesting ourselves, the companies that go along with us? Well, uh, boycotts historically almost never work. Uh, South Africa and apartheid is, is the one exception that proves the rule there. Uh, American consumers, had they wanted to vote with their pocketbooks against Chinese actions, have had many, many chances to do so after the past several years, as, as you've just mentioned, and they haven't done it. Uh, it would really take uh, pressure from the Beijing government or from Washington for increasing decoupling uh, for countries to reassess their profitability in China. The, boy, the American consumers probably can't do it. And we have to be a little careful. Uh, the more support Americans show for the protests, which again may already have ended, we don't know yet, the more support we show, the more credibility we give to China's leaders who will say, this has all been orchestrated by outsiders and there's a color revolution fomented by the United States, which is what they say about uh, Hong Kong, what they've said about other places within China. And so we don't want to give credibility to that. Uh, Phil Mattingly just mentioned the caution of the White House. I don't think it's just about upholding agreements that Biden and Xi Jinping reached in Indonesia. It's also about not appearing uh, to be behind these protests, because mm -hmm. that's something that Beijing would use instantly as a weapon against these demonstrators. All right, Robert Daly, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Coming up, the Russians are gone, but the pain and suffering is